We're good to do it? All right. So welcome to Finding Health Information with PubMed and Medline Plus. Uh, whether you're trying to find information for a research paper or you're trying to identify uh, research for your own personal health issues so that you can feel prepared to speak to your doctor or make health decisions, Medline with full text and Medline Plus will help you. So to begin with, let's talk a little bit about what these two databases are. First off, PubMed, if you haven't heard about it before, is a free tool produced by the National Library of Medicine. It provides access, both PubMed and Medline, they provide access to biomedical literature um, that are used by practitioners and researchers in the fields of health, medicine, biology, psychology, neuroscience, and other life sciences. The key here is life sciences. You will find some other types of uh, disciplines represented. For instance, I often use this when working with students in economics who are looking for health economics information because um, there's interesting ways to narrow it down. And of course, students who are in public health who are trying to find patterns um, and trends and things like racial disparities in maternal mortality, it's gonna be excellent for them too. Even students who are chemists or physicists, there are some elements that might be helpful for them as well, since you can get down to some of the formulas. But predominantly, it's for the biomedical sciences. Um, so hopefully you're thinking about it in those disciplines. And to the literature, like I said before, is predominantly scholarly. So you're gonna have articles that are either original research where an experiment has been done and it's telling you the results and the ramifications of what that, lit that experiment might mean to the larger picture. Or it might be a literature review, which is kind of a secondary research and it summarizes what others have found. And there's really cool, versions of literature reviews called systematic reviews and meta-analysis, which are subsets of literature reviews. And they are so interesting because when you're trying to understand what did all these individual studies say, those will tell you what, um, what, the, what they believe is the true answer, despite all the differences that might've been said. So those are the, some of the things that you'll find in these two tools. And honestly, the way that they're different is that Technically, Medline is a part of PubMed. So um, Medline is one component of PubMed. And what we're gonna be talking about today when we're talking about Medline is a database that we subscribe to. So I'll get more on that to be, uh, in just a moment. Um, but Medline, if you're searching PubMed, you are also searching Medline. Medline is the largest component of PubMed. And as you can see in this slide, um, there's two other components. One is PubMed Central and one is Bookshelf. PubMed Central is all full text articles um, and journals that have been submitted to the National Library of Medicine. Um, and so they are still high quality because the National Library of Medicine will review them before they're accepted, but full, full text. Um, Medline, on the other hand, it's a selection of journals that the National Library of Medicine thinks is really important to be able to index and provide access to the citations. So they have, they actively seek to get that information into Medline. And then Bookshelf is just kind of what you see it saying there, Bookshelf. It's gonna be um, access to chapters in books. So if you're trying to find something that's more of a larger overview, that might be really helpful. Books are always great for getting introduced to a topic and then getting into the nuances of it. So in PubMed, you'll find all those things. And Medline is gonna give you the results that are predominantly uh, in, Medline, in PubMed. So your Medline results will be the predominant results of your PubMed search. PubMed, as I said before, is freely available. So if you went ahead and Googled right now PubMed, you would get this link and it would take you to the search tool. It's a super intuitive search tool and we'll go over it in just a second, but that's how you can access it. What is useful about PubMed is that it is used by practitioners. So um, it's a useful tool to use. The only problem is, is that sometimes the articles that are available there are hidden behind paywalls. So that's one thing that you might run into. As I mentioned before, Medline is part of PubMed, but the library does subscribe to a version of Medline called Medline with full text. It's a subscription database. 
And it gives us access to about 1,200 more additional journals in terms of the full text. Plus, you add that on top of things that we already subscribe to, it expands your access to full text. Surprisingly, though, you will not find a ton of difference in some of your search results. A lot of it's going to be coming down to how you prefer to access the full text of your results. Both of these are great databases. Um, and they give you the scholarly content that you need, along with some really awesome ways to filter the results. So let's get into that. Um, so which is best for you? What you want to think about is how comfortable are you in terms of finding access to the full text? So like I said, with PubMed, um, there are a lot of full text options. For instance, the items that are in PubMed Central um, those are all full text and not all that information is in the Medline with full text database because not all those journals are in Medline with full text. So it does expand your content and um, it gives you full text access to that. But there's a lot of Medline journals in PubMed that are not accessible through the publisher. So publishers will let you have access to the full text of an article sometimes when it's been paid for to be open access. So we actually have an example here on campus of a faculty member and student who paid to get into one of the best physics journals. Um, the, it, you don't have to, that wasn't the requirement for getting into the journal, but they were given the option after their article was accepted to pay a fee so that it could then be open access for anybody else to use, which is really cool that they were willing to do that. Otherwise, um, it would have been hidden behind a paywall, still accessible through other means, but not as readily available. So they went ahead and took that extra step. So you'll see some of those types of materials in PubMed. Um, but overall, if you run into those publisher sites, you're gonna have to know how to use the library tools anyway to figure out how to find the full text of an article. And honestly, that's one of the things that most people struggle with. You can always come and ask us when you run into that, um, which honestly, sometimes when you're using PubMed, you don't run into it that much. So much content is available freely. But if you do run into that, then we can teach you how to go through that. So really when you're deciding which tool to use, do you want the, um, are you comfortable with a slightly less content in Medline, but it's just enough for what you need and it's definitely the highest quality material um, and provides easy access? That would be an argument for Medline with full text. But if you are just looking for the largest set of content and you're comfortable navigating through some of the full text issues, then PubMed might be for you. So now I wanted to kind of delve into what are some of the basic search features that you'll see in there? Hopefully at this point, you have already gone ahead and chosen one of the tools. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and jump in to the library homepage, agnescott.ed forward slash library and go to databases A to Z right here. We have our databases A to Z list here. We also have our databases A to Z list up here. We just try to make it intuitive for people depending on where they're at. So you're gonna to wanna to click on that to get into Medline with full text, the database that we subscribe to that has the additional full text content. And then you click on M for uh, Medline. If you wanted to see other databases that were in your field, so for instance, if you were doing this as a bio biology project, you could click on biology here and you'll see that Medline is one of our best bets for that. So you'll find that um, we do have subject menus that will help you get to the right discipline uh, tools for your discipline, but um, you could also, if you didn't use the subject menu, you could just go to the name of the database, so M for Medline with full text. So you can choose to use this one, or you can choose to use uh, PubMed with, um, that is freely available. So I'm just going to you can see that I already have the, Google, the um, web address here, but if you Google search, you should get to this page too. So these are the two options that we have. And in terms of doing a basic search, um, let's see what happens with our results. So if we start with a basic concept, um, one of the ones that was recommended by an individual attending this session today, uh, then we will see that we get 735 articles in this version. And then when we do it over here, oh, 
oops, let me put the last name, last word on there. It will locate an additional set of results. So first thing that you might notice is that the results here are pretty similar. 735, 740. So again, like I said, it's really up to you how you want to access. As you're looking at the results, you can see here that it's saying free article. Um, so we're in PubMed. And if you wanted to um, look at the second one, which does not say free article, once we go into the record here, it will have an option over here. So um, this one, if I click on this link, it should get me access to the full text. And um, I think this, let's see, this one is telling us that we need to sub sub subscribe. And uh, we'll come back to this, uh, how you would get, get access to this. Um, well, actually, let's just go ahead and put over it right now. There's three options that you would have to determine whether we own it. The first one is to go to find journals right here on the library homepage and then take the name of this journal and see if we own it. So the name of this journal is just um, the BMJ. <laughs> so we'll check on the library homepage to see if we have the BMJ uh, under the find journal tool here in the middle. And we're getting a lot of options here. So, um, we might have to do a little bit of navigating to figure out which one is the one that we want. I'm going to go start with this uh, BMJ open and you can see it's listing all the databases that have the full text and it's actually showing us that free access through um, Highwire is available here. Um, let's go back and see why it might not have taken us directly to it. Nope, it looks like it was published in 2015. Um, so if we go back to this results, um, all of these databases seem like they would provide access to the 2015. So I'm just gonna click on the psychology database and it is going to take me into one of the databases that the library subscribes to. And we should be able to get access to the full text of that publication. And from here, we could take that title and search for it in this publication to get access to the full text. We could also drill down using this menu, but here we go. Um, actually, that's not it. Uh, <laughs> so we might, might have chosen the wrong journal. But anyway, that would be kind of the ideal of how you work with PubMed. I'm gonna delete some of these things. Um, as you can see, you can run into access issues uh, from some of the things, and in, then you have to end up navigating what are your access points. Another way from this page that you could determine if we have access is you should always look for the institutional login options. Down here, it says login via Open Athens. And if we click on that, then that's our authentication system. It's going to ask you, uh, well, for some reason it logged me straight in, um, or it just denied me, I'm not really sure. I shouldn't have just decided to um, choose an article I hadn't tested. Uh, but anyway, that would be normally how you would identify if we have access to the full text from the actual journal page that you might've found through PubMed. And there's a really good resource on the library homepage. If you go to off-campus access, it'll say, why am I being prompted to pay for this article? And it lists a lot of the publisher databases that um, we subscribe to. And so for instance, if this had appeared in Science Direct, you would have seen this get access button, then you would have um, clicked on that and it would have told you to buy it or check for access. That would have taken to, you to a page where you could have put your institutional um, name there as I did right there. And then you would sign in via your institution and it would give you this username and password and then you'd make it in. So that's um, another way that you might be able to get full text to that publication. Let me back up. I kind of deviated um, once we were on those results. So let me close a few things real quickly. 
Um, but yeah, you can see that you can identify different ways to get access to the items. But really what I want to show you here is more, what are your options in terms of searching? So um, the first way that we always narrow down a search is maybe to add another keyword if we're getting too many results. Another way that you could do it is to decide that you want to use one of the filters over here. Both of the databases, this is the Medline with full text that's available through Agnes Scott. You can see that they also have these filters on the left-hand side. There's uh, browse by date, so we could narrow the date to a more recent time period. Um, and that's one of the things that we're allowed to do here. We can look at the type of publication. So on this one, it's narrowing it down to things like meta-analysis, systematic review, review, clinical trials. You don't have to narrow it to that, but that's an option that you have if you're looking for, if you're new to a topic, honestly, a review article is really awesome way to get started. Uh, over here, it doesn't let you do that, but if um, you were to go to advanced search, you will see that it does have advanced search options that would let you narrow down first to review articles and then by publication type. So there's a lot of different ways that you can narrow your search and you just have to think about um, using those tools to get yourself down to the right age group, the right kind of study, the right language for yourself. And both of the databases provide access to that. You'll see here under additional filters in PubMed that it's showing all sorts of um, article types, the names of journals, um, or the types of journals, there's your dental journals, subjects uh, that you might wanna focus in on, sex, language, age. I really like their age categories. So those are ways that you can narrow your focus, um, but let's go ahead and try adding in treatment. So I'm gonna add the word treatment in here, and I got 254 results. And in this one, I'm adding the word treatment as well. And you'll see that I get very few results here. Um, the reason that Medline with full text is giving us far less results than what we're seeing here is how it's searching. So that's another unique feature. Um, in any database that you're using, there's a few different ways that the database may be configured to search. PubMed is probably the best way to possibly do a basic search. What it's doing is it's finding my keywords anywhere in the full text that it has access to. Um, and in addition to that, usually you have to change this word treatment to try to think of other alternative synonyms or related words, but it automatically does that for you, which is why we end up with 254 results, is it's automatically um, expanding the results. In addition, um, we don't have to put the word and in between here. Um, usually when a database is searching, it's looking at, a, at each word as uh, together. So that we call that phrase-based searching. And when you're searching in Google, for instance, Google automatically puts the word and in between each of the terms. That's really what's sort of going on here in this PubMed search. You'll see that it didn't change at all because that word and um, is already factored in. So that gives us more results versus this one, which um, and is not already in there. So if we were to put the word and in between those terms, you'll see that it does expand it. Um, and one of the things that, even though I pro you're probably feeling like PubMed is the way to go now of these two tools, you can go to treatment uh, type, type in treatment in the second box here. And there are additional options that you have. So for instance, I could go to all text. Um, this will now start searching for this in the all text and this in the citation and abstract, whereas this one is searching, it doesn't give you any ability to do the control of where your search terms are being found, at, at least not in a very super intuitive way. Um, and then the other thing that we can do here is we can always use the word or inside of a box to expand it. So uh, we might be looking at antiviral um, as a treatment or um, a cyclovir.
think that's how you spell it. I don't think I spelled it right. And so that'll expand our results, but you'll see that we're still getting a large number of results. Um, in terms of full text access, in terms of Medline with full text, uh, you can see that they have immediate full text here. Anytime you see the full text finder, that means that we do have access to the full text somewhere in the database. Um, not this database, but in our databases. So you could click on that and it's gonna cross search all of our library databases to see which one has the full text. This one happens to be a directory of open access. And so it takes us to the database and we should be able to search for the journal article there. So that's another easy access point. Remember when we are in PubMed, we had to start back at the library homepage, try to search in the uh, find journal tool and locate it that way. Um, with this one as well, this is Medline with full text. You'll see that anytime that there is a blank underneath, you know that we don't have access to it. So we don't have access to number four or number five in these search results, but you still have access to them because you can go to the library homepage and click on interlibrary loan and complete this article request form, which if you fill that out, then we'll email you the article within a couple of days. Usually it's actually the same day or just the next day. And all you have to do is put in that citation information. It doesn't cost you anything. That's something that you can still do with PubMed um, if you don't find it, but you do have to verify that we don't have it in our collection first. So you will still need to start at that fine journal page and make sure that we don't own it. So those are some of the key things. And um, the two other things that are most important about this database and what makes them a little bit more exciting to use because a lot of those are basic features that you see in a lot of different databases. Um, but what really makes these two special is one, um, if we are in PubMed and we're looking at this article here, this looks like a great article for treatment. It was published in 2018, it's free, um, so that's great. And if I click on this title, you'll see that um, it tells me similar articles, so it's telling me similar articles, but it also tells me since that was published in 2018, what are the other articles that have cited this article? And that's a very unique feature that we only have in a few number of our databases. We have it in Web of Science, which is one of my favorite databases, but our Medline with full text does not have this feature. So this is a great way for you to grow your search. Once you find one great article, this might be the place to go. And then um, you can also click on cited by over here to get access to it. Um, the other thing that I would recommend in here is let's go back to the basic search. Um, one thing that these two databases do, and I'm sorry that we're gonna go over for just two minutes, but I wanna make sure that this is the part that is probably gonna be most helpful to a novice searcher. Um, it does take a little bit of skill, but um, I think that as long as you remember that this option is there, it's a really great feature. So um, we're looking, I wish I knew how to spell anaphylactic shock. Let's look that up. There we go. So I'm gonna look up this as a term. Um, and I'm gonna use the mesh subject terms here. So if I've integered it here, it's just gonna look for it anywhere in the title, the abstract and the subject terms. Um, and I'm getting 1700 results. But if I go up here to the mesh subject terms, you can go ahead and put that term. This is often how I test out a topic to see if it's covered. And it's gonna cross search its index of all the terms that it has. And you can see here that it's giving us some broader terms and narrower terms. So it helps you determine what is gonna be um, your best terminology for this and um, what are some additional ways that you could phrase it. So you can see here, it's telling us that for anaphylactic shock, we wanna use anaphylaxis. So we're gonna go ahead and click on this little square here. And this is when it does something really amazing. Over here on the left-hand side, it's giving us subheadings. And this is what's gonna save your life the most when you're trying to find health information is 
you can now narrow it to the type of information that you're looking for. So if you are trying to understand um, how the epidemiology of it, you would be able to click on it here. So these are some of the broad concepts that people are usually doing research on, economics, um, pathology, the psychology, psychological effect. Um, so you would be able to find one of the key elements that might be most helpful to you. And I'm looking to see, let's see chemical induced. I'm gonna click on that one to see if it tells us much about medicines that are interacting. And what it does is it adds that as a little notation to the search. And this becomes a very specific search. Now, if we were to do this, um, the same thing is possible in PubMed. Um, it's just not on the same location. Over here, you would go down to the MES, that stands for Medical Subject Headings Database, and you would type in the same keyword there. Um, I guess I should have done, yeah, I should have done it the same way. So let's do it that way and click search. And you can see it gives us a nice description of what that is. And it gives us that same menu, but in a different way. So there's ways that you can narrow it um, to get to your search results. And for me, that is probably the most helpful thing that I find in terms of finding health information. So, um, so the things that I want you to walk away with from this presentation is first that Medline with full text is a subscription database um, that provides extra access to full text and may make it easier for undergraduate students to find the articles that they're most interested in because it provides a really intuitive way to know whether the full text is available um, or needs to be ordered through interlibrary loan. Um, PubMed is a free tool that is very similar um, in terms of the search results. If you're going into this field, you probably wanna learn how to use it. it. Provides, again, access to a lot of full text. Um, they have great filters, but really the thing is, is take advantage of those mesh subject terms so that you can narrow your search down to scholarly articles that are talking about your topic. I can tell you that when I was helping my mother with, um, she was in the hospital for atrial flutter um, and they needed to ask about, um, they gave us options of a drug that she could take to lower uh, her um, reaction to, I think it was some potassium in her system. And they told us what the options were and we were able to research both of those and see individual studies that have come up with results of how um, they had impacted individuals and consider the, own, the characteristics that she had that might match those. But also we could find literature reviews that would summarize that for us. And so it takes you a little bit beyond um, the basic health databases that are for consumers. There is um, Medline, Medline Plus, which is part of um, the National Library of Medicine. That can be a place for you as a consumer to get similar information that you'd get if you were searching Web, WebMD and stuff like that. So that's always a good starting point, but Medline itself, uh, Medline with full text, PubMed, they're going to take you further. So that is basically what I had to share with you today. And um, if you need more help, you can contact us at the library, just email us at library at agnescott.edu, and we will um, work one-on-one -on -one with you to get the information that you need.